Yo, what's going on? We're doing something a little bit different today um, on the YouTube end. It should be normal. And uh, I think we're also going to be in the Facebook group in a slightly different orientation. But we're going to be doing a new windshield film um, on the Blazer, and that's going to be Apex 50%, which is a two-layer new version of Apex. So the question here is, is this also working to Facebook? Let me, I don't think yet, so that's good. Stream. All right, let's see. <gasps> oh, it is working. Oh, that's cool. All right, we're going to try this out. Post in group. Complete post details. Your current frame rate is too low. Recommended key frame rates are in the range of on what? Key frame rate too low. Well, I can't change that, can I? Is the old Apex still worth for the sides and back? I have a brand new roll. I was going to use it, but I keep hearing about it not sticking. No, it's still, it still works. So it, it's not about the doors. So there's, there's a little bit of misinformation. It's primarily on windshields. Um, it has to do with like the side frit lines. Um, sometimes it curls back, which is why they made a more aggressive, like it's the same base as C2 carbon, which doesn't have any problems. And what's weird is that when you put a, layers of ceramic in it, all of a sudden we're having these like weird curling issues on the dot areas until it's like dried out and locked down. Other than that, it's totally fine. You're not going to have any issues. So it's just, it's just about getting it set. What I can tell you is if you install it and you have issues with it, they'll make it right, 100%. I'm fiddling around with some stuff, too. I don't really understand why this is. Let it catch up a little bit. Doing a couple of tests and then and then we'll get started. Yeah, it's not great. I might just have to not use this plugin for now. Which is kind of a shame because I just spent the past like hour and a half trying to get that to work. And now I'm live on YouTube. So I think I'm gonna handle my phone and then we'll do two. Cause I wanna see how this works too. So I'm going to set up a live stream for the group, um, and I'm going to go live in the group as well. Uh, description, Apex.
All right. All right. All right, we're going to get to it. Oh, yeah, shit. I need mics. Oh, yeah, mics are right here. I'm smart. So now I can probably put this back over on the side. I can just do what I was doing. Notice me, senpai. <laughs> I have factory rear tint on an 18 Sportage. I want darker all the way around. What 10 percent will black everything out except the windshield? I mean, you can do five over it if you wanted to. 20 over 20 will make it 5 percent. So like 20 over your existing. But if you want to make sure it's like extra dark, just do five. 20 or 15. So you have a couple of options. Just depends on the type of person that you are. See, this part, this part drives me nuts, though. This part flops all over the place. And we gotta do a windshield. How much should I charge for Pro Nano versus Pro Classic? Um, Pro Nano, like, you, two different leagues there. So I just start all, m all the jobs, like sides and rear at 290, and then I do 450 for Pro Nano. So Pro Classic, 290, Pro Nano, 450. If I was a little cheaper on that, I'd probably get a little bit more business too. So keep those things in mind. Just depends on your demographic and how you market. All right. <gasps> oh yeah, we're doing a... Oh, I forgot about that. And maybe we should go back. <laughs> oh god what have I done you know if this thing could stop asking for the date and time every time I restart it even though it's got an SD card in it that would be great I don't understand why it does that edit alright we'll go back to Two point seven K thirty, right? Oh yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. And now plug this back in and then we pop GoPro. Cam link, there we go. See, this is the stuff that happens behind the scenes that you guys never see because it's boring. All right, go. So we got that, and then I can go. Um, transform. There we go. Okay. Okay, now we good. Now we can start. <laughs> because if you're going to stream on Facebook, it's best to do vertical. If you're going to stream on YouTube, it's debatable, but I think overall, horizontal is more expected. So, Trying to do both. That's what I do. What's your recommended way of tinting older type windows? Um, ooh, cut them exact or leave a little gap. GoPro. 
Yeah, windows that don't give you any type of tolerances that way are real tricky and they hold a lot of dirt. So it's good to spray all the edges, um, give them a good washout, like air gun, stuff like that. That would be good. All right. All good? Let's see. All right. Should be good. Okay, yeah, that'd be fine. So just follow me around, and then we'll uh, we'll see how this disaster goes, right? Tool belt. All right. So what we're gonna be doing is um, we're gonna be doing 50% Apex Ultra on the windshield. So what's funny is I have Apex 50 on the windshield, so that needs to come off. And then we're going to see what it's like to go through a fresh install with, with the film. I got to find where I, put, where I put the box. I think it's in the back, though. Oh, I clip myself. I did. Cool. So this is it. This is the stuff. Steamer's going, so we'll make sure this is ready. Oh, there's tape on the top, too. That figures. And then that means it's on the bottom. What other platform? Uh, the Facebook group. So window tint stuff on Facebook right now. I was trying to do a couple things today. And then this is it. So I'll put this in front of the uh, in the front of the heat box a little bit. I could also grab a sample of the other stuff and see how it compares. I'm not expecting that part to be any different. Um, but what they did say is the film is gonna be thicker. Um, it's going to shrink real nice. The clarity is going to be improved, um, which are, I don't know, probably going to be small differences ultimately. Like clarity is, is really what I'm most interested in. But with the lighter ones, clarity really isn't a huge issue. And then also sticking to the sides, we're going to see just how it works. So we've got to remove, gotta remove some stuffs. So I need a soak rope. So let me grab that. It's over here. And a way to tuck it in. Let me grab this guy. I also gotta take out a mirror too. Checking in soak shield. I've always really liked this because it helps keep the towel stuck down as well, kind of like out of your way. So whenever you have it bunched up in certain areas, this helps knock it down a little bit farther if you have the space to do it. Oh, it's all good. You can get in here. Are people on Facebook? Uh, I see a few. Couple. Oh, 21. Oh, nice. What's up? What's up? What's up, dudes? Um, we got to take this off, too. I think it's the first day that I get to use my 
LTT screwdriver. I gotta figure out how to <laughs> best remove this. This is this part's always obnoxious for me. You have this. You have this little uh, this little spot here that likes to not come loose. But once it does, the mirror is easy to pull. There, that. I wouldn't think it'd be so difficult though. But this part really likes to like stick in here. Thankfully this is my car though, so I don't care as much. Okay, we can turn that out of the way. Yes! I'm actually like excited to use a screwdriver. So this is like the Linus Tech Tips screwdriver. And is it still not far enough out of the way? It's probably not far enough out of the way. No! Ugh. All right, fine. Damn you. See, like, you can crank on this thing, and it still ugh, makes the stick. I don't buy shirts. I don't buy a lot of things, but they put a lot of work into a ratcheting screwdriver. Oh yeah, that's nice. There we go. And that was the whole amount <laughs> that I'm gonna use that screwdriver. I bought two. I bought one for each side of the car. How's this part? There we go. Okay, so that comes out. I've done this a number of times before. That always helps with just getting to everything on the windshield so we can move these to the side. Um, little bit storage here. I have two. All I need is like a Torx and a Phillips. That's it. But there's so many bits that I have stored up in here now. This is, this is cool. I like this a lot. Um, steamer. So let's start steaming. Um, razor blade. This is probably the part that I'm really like least looking forward to right now. Whenever I have to test another windshield film, like I've already been testing Apex for quite a while now. And I have no gripes with anything about it. Um, when it's fixed to the car. But this goes for like any removal. <laughs> Once it's on, it's on. So then you have to go through and tediously pull another friggin' windshield. <laughs> Good news is Good news is these um, don't need, or don't need uh, a lot of scraping or anything. The glue usually comes off pretty clean, but it, it sticks really <laughs> aggressively still, so it takes a fair amount of work. Now you need to re recalibrate the camera and the mirror. No, this isn't that system. This is my car. Um, so there's a big difference between the um, ADAS systems that they're putting in a lot of cars and um, the 360 camera system that I have. So I don't have any type of lane departure or whatnot. All I have is basically my, um, my mirror is a screen. And so it's, it's just purely a dumb video feed that goes to it. So you unplug it, you plug it back in, everything's fine, nothing needs to be recalibrated. It's an important thing to just be able to recognize because you can pull a lot of mirrors still. You just always want to pay attention to when they have that like fixed camera system. Um, don't disturb that. You don't want to pull that off the windshield. But God knows how many layers of tint that I've put on this car at this point.
it's the cold parts. It's also cold outside. So then you gotta warm everything up. It just takes time. Steamer. Um, I've got a Jiffy steamer. I took, I took this hose. <laughs> Good timing for that question too. Where did you get the hose attachment? So the hose attachment is actually off my old steamer. I had like a, I had like a shark steamer. And then I merged the hoses together. So I took the end off of the Jiffy one, put it over the other end. They're like the same size there. And now I have super hose. It's awesome. So the steamer itself, it takes an annoying amount of time to actually warm up. But once it does, it outputs a lot of steam. So you just got to be patient for it. I've bought a number of other steamers. Um, they all have their drawbacks, though. Super hose! This poor car. It's had so many windshields. This poor car. How about poor me? I'm sick of pulling windshields. How many steam burns? <laughs> Too many. And to all the people that say, oh, just leave it outside in the sun. Like, dudes, what sun? We don't have sun here. It's been cloudy for like a month. Super. <laughs> burns, burns with the 20. So sad for you to pull off a perfectly good windshield film. <laughs> yeah, I know it, right? It's the only way that it gets tested though. See, every time you're like, yeah, just try it really quick. It's, this is what goes into, oh yeah, just try it. <laughs> and let me know every time. All right, we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch sides. <sighs> so what's nice is I don't have to move the steamer around um, with this hose, but since I don't wanna put a steamy hose all over Jack, we're gonna move this over to the other side. Does anybody have good questions on Facebook too? No, nobody's got good questions. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Let me fix this. There we go. Yes, yes, it's definitely live right now. Jack is holding the camera. So if anybody has any decent questions on Facebook, we're also streaming on YouTube. But I was curious to see how a Facebook stream went alongside of this. Different perspective. Very important though. Which is better, Pro Classic or C2 Carbon? Well, they're just in different leagues. So in far, as far as just performance, you're gonna get more out of C2. It's a carbon film, so it blocks more heat out of the car. Pro Classic is a solid, color-stable dyed film. So if you're only picking one, C2 is the better film but I sell both of them because it depends on budgets. Always have some way for people to spend more money with your business. And what's nice is you have a way to offer them more value too. So the way I have all my films um, is, is very linear. You have a dyed, you have a carbon, you have a ceramic. It's very easy to show people the differences. Here in the wintertime, 
you know, it's like buying summertime clothes in the winter. It's just not as many people do it. But luckily people that are spending a little bit more money on this kind of stuff realize that, oh, hey, yeah, summer's right around the corner. So, hey, I should probably do something a little bit better, more comfortable. Not everybody gets it though. So the difference, and we'll jump up to, to the heat box in a little bit. We'll take this up there. Here, so we'll take a piece of this and we'll bring this up front and we'll compare it with new version because I needed a piece of 50% anyways. So let's try this and we'll talk about We'll talk about the differences between carbon and ceramic. Is offering too many films a bad idea? Yes, three is ideal. You could do four. Um, you just gotta understand that most people don't know what you know. So the more confusing that you make it, the harder it is for them to make a decision. Okay. So, let me talk through just real quick. This is what I show people. Let me turn off my heat here too so I freeze to death. Um, but I have three different film types here. So this is Pro Classic. This is color stable. This is C2 carbon. Um, so this is a carbon film. And then this is Pro Nano Ceramic. This is a ceramic film. Apex is going to sit farther up here. But you'll notice, hey, why don't you have Apex on there? Um, it's winter here right now. It's really cold, and I would love to carry just the ultimate whatever, but that also comes with a cost. So here, Pro Classic, this is going to be my entry. Um, up from that, you spend a little bit more, you get 50% heat reduction. And then up from that, you get 70 to 80%. So what that means is, let's go over to the box. This is the box. Um, so highly, highly recommend having a meter to pair with your box. So this is a heat lamp demo. You can find these from Geo, Sun Distributing, Tint Depot. Um, they sell, they're, they're worth their entire value in the first sale. So they're a quick, easy way to demonstrate why you're going to want one film over the next. So if I turn this bulb on, this is a 250 watt IR heat lamp. So I feel a lot of heat coming off of there. I like to place the meter, like if I put it close, it gets higher. If I take it farther away, it goes lower. I just like to find a good round number that's easy to do math off of. So 300 usually is good. You can see as soon as I block that, it goes down. So I can feel a lot of heat. That number is telling you how much heat is coming off of here at that distance. So as soon as I go to the carbon, that number just dropped in half. So I can still feel heat coming through, it's just not as much. Then if I go to the ceramic, that number drops in half yet again. So put my hand in front of there, I can hardly feel that. So when we're going to the 50%, this is where it's gonna get a little funny. Um, let's do an apples to apples comparison between both Apex Ultra and this. I, I don't know if there's really gonna be a difference. So here, we're just gonna drop this in front, meters at 300. Boom, down to 30. <laughs> Remember, the ceramic here before, that was at 70. And then this has no glass. Glass helps a little bit. So you pop that in front, 30. <laughs> Apex is crazy. So it then drops in half again. Um, so even with Pro Nano, I can hardly feel the, the heat a little bit. So now you can imagine cutting that half and get, again, you're taking what little, cutting that in half. Did we say that enough? All right, now let's drop the new one through it. And it's right about the same. So 30, 28 to, no, no, just depends on the angle. Yep, so exact same. So from what I understand, there's the same ceramic layers in this, in the ultra version, as uh, the regular version. So the real difference is that this is now a two mil, so this is gonna help with clarity. So let's go 
to the blazer, and then we're gonna set we're gonna set this up um, for installation here. But so the main difference is just the construction of it. Um, one problem that people had, including me, is when you installed it. Um, on the edges, it would start to curl in on the initial install, so you'd have to sit there and heat it up and dry it out. It's something that we've been racking our brains over trying to figure out because it has the same base as the C2 carbon, which doesn't ever do that. So it's weird that you would add a little ceramic to it, and then it would start curling back. So it's not that it's a bad adhesive, it's that there's some funkiness going on that we're trying to figure out. Um, so at this point, this is the updated version of it. It's got better adhesive, it's thicker, and that also helps with the, um, it helps with, sorry, comments are, are going too. So it uh, helps with the clarity, helps, uh, they, they up the glue so it's a little bit stronger. Um, and then I'm told with shrinking too, so that's where we'll get into these little differences between the two. Pro Nano also is also a, um, two mil film, so it's not anything weird to me. So I'm uh, curious to see what this is going to be like to set up and then uh, and then install. What mill is Pro Nano? Pro Nano is a two mil. So Pro Classic is a one and a half. So Pro Nano comes from Pro Classic. That's basically the base. They add a layer of ceramic to it, so it's that same glue construction and stuff. So when you get into C2, Carbon Plus and Apex are based off of C2 Carbon, where Pro Nano is based off of Pro Classic. So you can see where there's some crossover similarities and stuff. So I'm still a Pro Nano user. I love the film. I think it's great, um, especially because you know it's winter six months out of the year. The heat that it blocks out is substantial. So when you get to I forgot to shut my steamer off. So, you know, you do have winter, um, but in the summertime, like, it's, it's plenty good. Down south, where, uh, you know, heat is more of a concern year-round, I could see starting at carbon and kind of working up from there. Super. Thank you. <laughs> Woot stream. All right, so prepping, a couple things that I always use. I use the tri edge scrub pad. I use this big, wide green Libman squeegee. Just a wider squeegee that helps form to the glass. It's quicker than just using my like hybrid squeegee. And then giving it a good scrub down because lots of salt, especially this time of year, and just general dirt. It's a quick way, rather than using a towel, of cleaning the windshield and not having any uh, water left behind or smears or grease or anything like that. It does really, really well. Soapy water. And then just give it a good scrub down squeegee. It's pretty quick. Then we can do glass aid on this. It's becoming less and less important on this because we use this for all the classes. <laughs> so it's already got a whole bunch of scratches on it. Um, who was that super chat, by the way? Uh, Sean. Sean with five, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Is there any Facebook comments? Uh, someone said, so nanocarbon question mark, is that ceramic question mark? Is nanocarbon ceramic? No. So nano is always like a marketing term. Nano just means small. So you'll hear carbon, ceramic, nanocarbon, nano ceramic. All that refers to is just another thing that they can throw on, really for marketing or just explanations. So if you see one person advertising a ceramic and one person advertising a, a nano ceramic, they're both the same. They both have a layer of ceramic in it. Now, there might be clarity difference from one to the other, but you wouldn't know that unless you tried both of them.
Don't knock over the new film. <laughs> I've made plenty. Let's put this down. Shoop. <sighs> Super. Thank you. Nick. Aw. Nick with the two. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. It has been, it, like, yeah, a lot has changed just in the past couple years. Pretty nuts. <laughs> kind of hard to keep track of everything that changed in the past couple years. All right, so, just going to miss the windshield. Use a dryer sheet. All I do is mist that, then just kind of spray this, suds it up. And we're going to put this coating on it. Then we're going to let that dry. Someone said, don't forget the glue stick. Don't forget the glue, st glue stick. I don't use glue sticks. Right, so hopefully we won't need one anymore. <laughs> right, with the, that's a good point. With this new film. With the Apex? Mm -hmm. I've got another thing that I'm kind of looking into doing. Um, we were playing around with it the other day. Now, Geo won't recommend this yet. Um, I'm playing around with like an alcohol solution that helps tack up the edges a lot faster. And I can't see any immediate problems, but long-term problems, that's, that's always up in the air. So I don't want to recommend something without at least playing around with it. Let me bring this up. Let's see. Let me see you guys. Look at that. There you are. Look, I can like my own stream. Um, 3M Crystalline versus Apex. Um, so those are really two different animals entirely. So Crystalline, I've only seen like a couple of times. But the installation of it's going to be like way different from Apex as far as like heating the film. You have to baby 3M and heat it on the outside and work inside. Um, but as far as living with them, I, I just haven't had it, um, had a chance to put it on my windshield for any length of time. So I don't know. I hear good things about crystalline, but I would need literally half a windshield um, with crystalline and half with Apex to really give a fair comparison, though. Oh, <laughs> Matt saying, don't forget about the glue stick. I gotcha. All right. Um, probably almost dry. So whenever you're using something like a dryer sheet, I mean, the windshield is nice and warm from the removal. So that'll dry out a lot faster, thankfully. So looks like we're all good to throw this across. Kind of line that up. This looks familiar. This looks like the last run of, uh, of Apex I got. I don't know how to describe it. It's like not, not as strong. Um, the, uh, there's like a little wavy texture to it. Like it, not like an orange peel or anything like that, but you can see like little indents. I noticed it was a little stronger on the other version. It didn't impact anything, though. Um, so I'm curious as far as <laughs> installation, though. Let's uh, we'll get this set up. Everything's all set to be shrunk. So whenever I'm doing a windshield, um, cut your sides fairly close to um, to the edge. So if you're not using glass aid, like. To me, that doesn't matter. You have a dot matrix border, cut your edge, give yourself like a half inch or just close. Reason being is you don't need the sides to be wide. And then make a little rough, what is called an H pattern. So lock it down in the middle, tack just the very edge. The main trick is to make sure the sides never release from the sides when you're shrinking. So I'll explain that when we get close to it. 
but it's fine to leave the tops and the bottoms long. Um, just pay attention to like any obstructions. So again, we'll kind of lift this up. We'll get it to lay flat in the center, tack it down. Then I'll trim the side here. Just straight up from there. And then we can just slightly tack the very edge of that because we're, we don't want to shrink out the sides. We just want to make everything go up and down. Um, on this, since I sprayed water up here, the film is tacking to the edge up here. That can get a little bit in the way, so it wouldn't hurt to then trim this off. Like anytime you have moldings on the roof or water that's kind of like locking the film down and messing with your shrink, it's nice to just kind of like get it out of your way. This isn't in a really curved windshield either, so it's not, it's not gonna be a big deal. We should probably plug the heat gun in though. Heat gun plugged in. Yeah, this part, I gotta fix this top part. It keeps slumping over. Okay, so heat gun on, 45 degree angle. Now, since this is a double ceramic here, I'm gonna be a little careful on going really, really fast. Reason being is the ceramic is gonna hold heat. So get the camera close for this. Once I heat this film up, let's keep that down. Put some heat on it. You see how it continues to shrink past when I remove the heat gun? It's always something to keep in mind when you're shrinking um, some ceramics and just other films in general. They will hold a little bit of heat and then they will continue to shrink past when you heated them. So, for the first few times you install it, just maybe go a little easy on it until you learn a little more about it. But yeah, as far as uh, shrinking so far, I mean, this looks like damn near every other film that I shrink. It's just quick. There was a super chat in there too. Thank you. I will get to that in just a minute. Got 30 people in here. Awesome. What's up, guys? They are here to see the shrinking. So let it sit. Make sure it's not going any farther than I want it to. Heard all that out. So when you get to the top corners, it's somewhere I should always focus on a little bit more. You always have these little air pockets, like little waves. So what you wanna do is smooth them out up to where the film is gonna start bunching up. You notice that this almost starts to curve, like it's pointed this way, but you can free up this edge here a little bit, lay that back down, and now this isn't even near as pronounced as it was it, what it was. Let the heat gun do the work. So again, this is starting to curve that way, so I'm gonna push it against that. I guess the analogy that we really came up with um, at the classes was, imagine that you shrink, so I'll show a little more on the other side. Imagine there are little waves going into the beach, 
You just want to sweep them in the direction that they look like they were going to the beach. That half is done. Let me grab, let me see what, um, what that super chat was too. Yeah, well, thank you so much for the 10. I appreciate it. Uh, did Matico 20 on, on the Mrs. Kia Sportage. It's warmer, almost amber color. She doesn't like it. Rec any recommendations? Um, Matico 20%. I've never used Matico. Um, a nice neutral 20%. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of Geo. So, Pro Classic, C2. Both of those are going to be really good. Same thing for Pro Nano. Uh, Pro Nano 35 is definitely a lot warmer, so she probably wouldn't like that. But if you're staying in the 20% range, any of the Geo lineup would work. Still going? Sick. Oh, OK. So it pauses when I, you click away from it. All right, other side. So heat gun's already on, it's hot. Um, I almost lost my felt card. So just like the other side, center's all tacked down. Make sure that edge is at least locked down a little bit so things are directed this way and this way. So we'll start shrinking. I'm gonna shrink basically up to this area right here. I'm not gonna try and shrink every, anything over that line. So as that starts to do this, you can press that back down, lock that line back down, and then just keep going back this way if you want. Or you can start in the center and work the other way. Where people mess up more often than not, it's on the sides. See, you just have to shrink the film till you get those little beach waves going. And then once they look like this, look, if they were waves going into a beach, just push them in the direction that they're going up to where they shrunk. And then this is the next area that's gonna bunch up. So I don't wanna press that down or else that's gonna start creasing. Just that little bit right there. That's all you need to do. Whenever it starts bunching up into fingers going this way, that's when the film is telling you, you need to shrink that. See, see how the side's coming off right here? It's picking up. I don't want that. I want to direct it back down. Make sure that finger is going this way and then it'll all pull together just fine. But if it ever lifts off the sides, always watch the sides. So you may have a little bit of finessing and you can always pick up the side and lay it back down and get back to where you were. Like that's totally fine. So if you press a little far and things are bunching up, just pick the film up, get that area to relax and just start working back into it. You don't need to re-shrink the area you're just loosening up what you already shrunk. A little more, a little more, till they start turning into those. And press them into the beach. A little more, a little more, a little more, boom. How do you keep clay bars nice? Um, honestly, just putting a clay bar on like a liner, just like a scrap liner, just kind of like wrapping it up in that. That's probably one of the best, or a wax paper. Leaving them on rags, they'll literally melt to the rag. Kind of sucks. A lot of things, if you just leave them on, they will like, they'll slowly like melt down. And that goes with a case and, and any, like any type of clay bar I've ever seen. They basically just, especially in warmer climates, 
they essentially like over time will just kind of melt down and stick to stuff really aggressively. So just a scrap piece of liner um, from tinting that day, just literally like leave it sitting on that or just wrap it in that and it'll be fine. All right, top corner. So same thing, these aren't, this isn't like a really curved windshield or anything. This is where we have a lot of students start out on for shrinking windshields and stuff. But same principles apply here. Heat gun up at an angle, and then if I see how there's this big finger on the side, I'm not gonna shrink it like that. I'm gonna tack down the side, I'm gonna make sure it's directed upwards. So you can do that just with your hand there. You can do that by pulling and directing the film upwards. There's a couple of ways to do it. Once I get about a quarter of the way up, See how this is curving this way? There you go. Now, direct that back up. Shrink in here. go, heat it up, press it out, cut up a piece of tint and stick it in the inside of the clay bar. Yeah, it's a nice little solution. That does work. As the clay kind of sticks to the tint a little bit, it'll start to like leave a little residue and you'll have to replace that after a while. Um, but for a time it does work. It's kind of funny. There we go. That's good. So now we'll cut it out. We'll get ready to install it. We're gonna reverse roll it. So that'll be nice to see. And also, can you leave your clay bar in water? Can you leave the clay bar in water? Yeah, um, but if you leave it in hot water, what I've noticed is it starts to almost turn into gum. Um, so like during the day, yeah, overnight, doesn't seem to settle really well long-term. I was doing that for a little while um, and I didn't have any problems during the day and then what I'd do is like I had a little food container and I'd empty the water overnight Um, but then if I left it full, especially on the warm days, yeah, it basically started to gum up the entire clay bar and made it just fall apart. There's that. Other side. All right. So cutting on glass aid. Um, I always leave my blade propped up just a little bit. A lot of times, like, you want to keep a nice low angle when you're cutting things, but I've noticed if you, like, prop your blade up a little bit, you almost dig it into the glass aid a little bit. That usually cuts more consistently. And then I get up to, like, where it is uncomfortable. And then I, this is probably one of the main reasons I don't use, like, a button is because my cutting is never from one spot all the way around. I cut what's most, most comfortable. So I'll sometimes start here because it's easier and then work my way back around, then pick up my cut from this area, come back over and go down. And then it's always easy for me to start and reach somewhere like the middle and then pull back this way rather than like trying to continue something all the way that way. I'm a righty, so whenever I'm like pulling the knife in one direction, that's always a little more comfortable for me. Nice, that was good. So we're gonna have to re-shrink the edges just a little bit. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna loosen up my glass aid here. We're gonna take that back around. Sometimes this goes well. Oh, look at that, that was nice. 
So once you cut your film out, you're gonna want to re-shrink it um, just on the edges. So this definitely pulled up a lot, probably because it's a little thicker, because a surprising amount of this just released from the, from the windshield. Hang on, let me smooth this back down. Usually just the edges pick up. Not, not usually this much. Probably a little bit of tension there. So most times, it's basically gonna look like this. So I'll do this side and then I'll finish up the other side. All I do is then take the heat gun and the top and bottom areas where I cut, I just run that heat gun close and I look for any fingers that would have popped up because you just cut away a section of the film. So you just wanna make sure it's all shrunk towards the edges so it smooths out and you don't have anything to uh, pop up on the inside. Should be good. Good. That side's good. Same thing with this side. A little weird. See, this is one of those things that it's hard to explain why this happened. Maybe a little bit of tension. Um, but most films, as soon as you cut the edge and then peel away that border, um, like it just wanted to, the whole thing is like <laughs> wanting to release from the glass a little bit. So let me just card this back down. Ooh. There we go. A little water would help too. Heat gun. See those little bit, that little bit right there that might pop up as like a little finger. Apex doesn't want to be tamed. Yeah, no kidding. I think a little bit is going to be the thickness of it. And the other bit is it's possible, it's just a little tight. So I put a little water in my hand, and what that's gonna do, I should do that with the bottom too. That's going to act almost like a glue, and then it'll hold. <laughs> That's it, because, <laughs> because it's not a windshield film. That's why. You put it on a windshield, and it wants, to, uh, it wants to run away. Yeah, best I can say is there's just a, enough tension to keep it off the windshield. Other side's good though. So, um, we need to clean the inside. So being that we just removed film, uh, there's no adhesive left behind um, with the previous film, but I'm still gonna take a razor and just make sure. I should probably put some, no, no, let me do this. DC Customs with a five. 
Long time no see. What's up, man? How you doing? Thank you so much for the five. I appreciate that. So There we go. Let's just block this off. There's some sensors there, but not much. Not much for me to get concerned about. Is that seal tape better than what we used to use? Um, I wouldn't say it's better. It's just really good and more affordable. So it's definitely equal. Um, little bonus if you care. Um, as you see, I can actually just tear pieces off, which is really nice. Um, but it's got the same type of tack, um, that house wrap tape does. And it's white, so you can see your edges really nicely. This sticks to seals really, really well. I mostly did it as kind of like an FU to pricing. Like, I was using Lowe's tape for so long, and then it went from, like... It went from $10 to like $15 like everybody else. I'm like, are you kidding me? Is it still very plastic? So it's not quite as thin, um, but it is pretty, I don't know, like it wraps around the seals and stuff really nicely. I just pick up a roll and try it out, see how you like it in comparison. It's good stuff. So, razor blade. I've got like a genius idea for anybody that wants to uh, just want to make sure it sticks to everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't sell it as a replacement if it didn't work as good as what the other stuff did. So, genius idea is make a uh, two and a half to three and a half inch wide razor blade, please. That would be great. Why not the razor blade handle? I've never liked the handles. Even when scraping glue, I don't like the handles. I never like having to replace it. I just scrape. What brand is it? So this is a new product. This goes with the Glass Aid line. This is the Seal Guard stuff. So a little bit of context on the thickness. If I can find it, eh, I don't know where the roll is. Um, but this stuff. This is a big old, big old roll. So I'll use this on the side seals. Just wrap those, just like we did with house wrap tape. This is, a, look at this essentially like house wrap tape that you can tear off if you care about that. Um, it's just more economical. It's nine bucks a roll rather than 15. I got salty at all the price increases. So what I wanted to do, I kind of talked about this on the last stream. I talked to a few different um, manufacturers and stuff to try and get, like literally I talked to the makers of um, tuck tape, see if I could just offer that on the store. <laughs> that wasn't possible. And tried a couple other things and it just wasn't viable to have on a tent store, which is really kind of sad because we all have come to really like it. Oh, there's a little bit of glue left behind. See, that's why I check. Probably when I pulled a little harder. The lower parts are always harder to get to. Put out a little bit of of your knife, bend it against the glass, and then you can just get rid of all of that. I think I have a side sweep too. It's not in the drawer. 
Where did we put it? Where did I put it? Not we. Where did I put it? It's not in that drawer either. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly shocked here. I'm constantly shocked. I manage to lose things so frequently and just misplace them. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm the best magician on myself. All right. If it sticks like tuck tape, I like it. Yeah, yeah, then you'll definitely like this stuff. I mean, the first couple places I looked was like, what is currently out there? I looked at all types of packing tapes. Packing tapes work great on cardboard. They just don't have as aggressive as an adhesive. Look into a bunch of different tapes. But there's something about um, a really grippy acrylic adhesive. And those are pretty much <laughs> exclusively on uh, house wrap tapes because they're made to be a permanent solution. Um, so when they're putting uh, the plastic sheeting over houses when they're being built, It's made to seam those sheets together and never be removed. We don't need a permanent application, but we need something that'll definitely like just not fall off when you go to spray seals and stuff. All right, last squeegee. And then we can get to the install. Should be pretty good here. Good. The sides? No, sides are 35. They're really light. Okay, it came back up. So I'm gonna keep that in mind when we go to install this. Mostly because if this side curls back and the other side doesn't, well, the other side is staying nice, so this might have gotten slightly overheated. That's also why we experiment. This isn't necessarily a how-to guide completely. This is, uh, hey, let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, a little bit more. Let's release that air. There we go. So I always take these squeegees over the outside just to make sure all the dust um, has been removed. Mostly with stuff around the edges too. Um, and then really taking a towel, if I feel like grabbing one, is a smart idea too. Take a towel, wipe your edges, and then we're going to peel this off in quarters here. And oh my God, it's backwards. I'm kidding. It's fine. It's not backwards. Spray a little water. Go about halfway, spray a little more water. Then we're gonna lay this back down, nice and clean and organized. Lay that liner over the tent. Don't really have to fuss over it too much. If it left some air pockets, it's fine. Run to the other side. Don't forget the squeegee. He always forgets the squeegee. Then we're gonna grab this again. I like to lift it. Thank you for the order, by the way. Um, I like to 
lift the film, lay it back down, spray it, and then just kind of, so I'm kind of just like half sweeping out stuff underneath it. It's not like a surefire way to make sure it's clean because there's still, you know, a dryer sheet under there. But I got really paranoid in my windshield installs and that's a quick thing that seems to have helped. But something that I think helps more, I'm gonna explain during the install. So we peel off just kind of a quarter here. Then I grab where that edge is and I pick up the rest of the tint so it's not just kind of flopping over on itself. Go back slightly over where we peeled on the other side and we're gonna lay this back down. This loosens up the liner. And then we're gonna roll it back up. That way we can just roll this, unroll this on the inside like magic. We're gonna flip the liner to the other side. Yes, this is Apex and this is the two mil version of it. So this is a newer iteration of that. So we're gonna roll that all up. So the trick here, I always love to show this. So I'm just continuing to roll up my window. My favorite part, this part blew my mind. When you roll it all the way up, then you stick the film um, basically to the roll. And what I'm going for right now is trying to get this liner back. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Sometimes it's hard to get. Yeah, a little bit, there we go. So there's the liner, there's the tint. I'm peeling this back from the liner. And so the liner is now sticking to the opposite side of the film. And this is the exposed tint side. So now we're gonna go and install it. Careful not to touch anything. And a real good trick that I've learned, not even a trick, leave the roll away from the glass as you're unrolling it. So I used to try and cram this whole thing up on the windshield. I used to put this roll right against the windshield, leave it back and leave an airspace in there and then your roll will, at least for me, turn out much cleaner. So you think shoving it against there somehow put dirt in between. I don't know. I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. This is a part I should, there we go. Ah, make sure that corner's tucked in. So I'll get about halfway. I'll grab that liner. Remember it's on the back side. And then I'll use the liner to help with the, uh, with the installation. If you want to hop um, to this side real quick, easier to show. All right. So then I'm going to swing this liner around and my left hand is supporting it against the glass. So I'm going to peel this back and just kind of let it drop. That way I can get this whole liner out of the car without bunching up against the side pillar. And then just continue. Continue my install and work that up on the glass without really fussing about. And if I did everything right here, which I did, um, but what I never know is if it turns out completely clean or not. That's the part I, um, I'm always crossing my fingers for. It should be good, 
but sometimes it's not. I bet that tension on the glass is gonna hold it. I don't know. So like we've had issues with it curling back. So that's what I'm wondering. But this is a version that I have not tried yet. So this has a little bit, a um, little bit more thickness on the glue to help. And it's two layers of polyester. And that helps with the clarity of it from what I understand. that <laughs> look at that adhesive all right so don't give it don't give it too much credit yet it's still you got water in between there that helps the real like the real truth in it is if it holds after I've squeezed it down for an extended period of time because what would happen is you go through and you install um, your whole window, and then you think everything's fine, and then it would slowly start to curl back. So it would come back really unexpected. Small. There's one little tiny speck there. It's my car. <laughs> it's my car, and it's in the driver's line of sight. I'm gonna go crazy. That's no, fine. So this, this is too much. Yeah, if it's gonna be somewhere, it's gonna be in the driver's view, that's for sure. So I can basically guarantee you I've probably over shrunk the side a little bit. Now it didn't look like I did when I was shrinking it, but it holds heat and then continues to warm up. So if this really pulls back, I'm going to basically blame it on that and say I need to be more careful next time. If that side stays, then I got no I got no problems with it. But it's that means it's still pretty sensitive and you just like it's a dual ceramic, it holds a lot of heat. So be careful not to over shrink it. So you can treat Pro Classic and C2 rougher than you could this film. Like you can just go at those films with a lot of heat and not have any problems. But with that tension, we'll see. It's, it's staying down. I definitely overshrunk it a little bit though. So if it stays, I'll be like more than happy. I'm not, I'm not asking for problems. This side's looking good though. I just, I just want a film to stick when I install it. That's all. <laughs> um, let's make sure this is all squeegeed out. So at this point, this is where you would start to see some problems, possibly. Like, everything's squeegeed out, tack up the edges a little bit, but I haven't taken a heat gun to it. So it's really just wet film against the glass, and you're hoping that adhesive is strong enough for it to hold on to those edges, and you have water sitting in between the dots, and you have a lot of tension on it. So, I don't know. We'll see. In the meantime, I will clean it off. And what's nice is I get to be super nitpicky about my own install on my own car. <laughs> so I noticed one little speck. It was pretty small though.
but I'm going to check it and we'll go over it because I know people have questions about imperfections and stuff like that and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And it's, it's all subjective, but what I say is you always want to give the impression of it being very, very clean and you don't want to leave stuff in between, like in the driver's line of sight. So let me clean this off and then we'll go over. This is still holding. That's good. I'm curious how much more they increase the glue thickness on it. So one thing that's going to be impossible to tell today is like clarity outside because it's cloudy outside and you really should let the film dry even though you can get a good impression of it right away. So that's going to have to wait and I'll definitely give some type of a follow-up with what's going on with the film but I don't want to remove it again. I'm, I'm so tired of removing windshield films. Let me find my alcohol spray here. All right. That. See that? See? This. This is my, this is my problem here. It still is doing it. <laughs> so I'm going to try my own fix here. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Sides, they curl back. And when you go to push them down, then it just starts to curl back again. So you see it was looking fine and then it snuck back up. Let me see, what is this? Is this my alcohol spray? All right, I'm gonna do this, Let's see. I can get this to lock down faster. Press it harder. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I don't know how much they, uh, if they were gonna endorse what I just did. <laughs> All right, the other thing too is don't get a heat gun too close. You don't want to like basically continue to shrink it while you're trying to dry it out. You just want to blow some air to hopefully dry out your edge. But like with Carbon Plus, I'd sit here for probably about 20 minutes doing this. So the real way to tell is after it started to do it. And you put some heat on it, that'll make it do it faster. If it's gonna do it at all. What would be real wild is if the other side doesn't do it at all. Then I just don't even know what to say. Um, it's sticking though. I think it's okay at this point. That's cool. But that's the, that's really what you got to keep an eye out for. Um, let your films rest for a little bit and then I don't, I don't, I'm, this is alcohol spray, so like, was it peeling up? I had that problem with Carbon Plus. Yeah, same here. Yep, it's starting to do it on this side. So this little bit right here, see how you're letting it sit, and now it's, it's starting to curl back up. That's just gonna, like, you have to catch that kind of stuff.
So I'm, I won't try any alcohol spray on this side. I'm just gonna try pressing it down, heating it up a little bit, and we'll just see if we can get it to tack. You know, the last thing he's gonna want me to do is start telling everybody to use alcohol on the edges. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. So like I said with the other side, do not just take the heat and put it real, real close. You're trying to dry out the edge. You're not trying to shrink the film anymore. So when it's curling back, your immediate reaction is grab your heat gun, heat up that edge, but that'll, that can make it worse. So what I wanna see right now, I think that bottom corner is starting to a little bit. So let's see, this is, Dry it out, give a good press down, and see if it stays. Because if, if a little bit of heat and you can touch up the edges, that means that it's essentially, like, it's, it's almost fixed. What would be scary is a situation that's hard to reach one of those corners and then you have it curling up. See, it's starting to do it a little bit more still. Even with a little bit of heat, pressing it down, those edges, they stay wet. Let me see, let me see. All right, let me go look at my other side real quick. This is still good. This is really good. It normally would have peeled back at this point. You guys are not gonna see me do something different. Wait, did we leave it on the other side? Where's my alcohol spray bottle? <laughs> see what I mean? I'm the best magician on myself. Oh, it's down there? Thanks. <laughs> All right. All right, before, before I use this, this isn't as bad now. So look at the corner. Look at how it's only this part now, before it was all the way up to here. So as it's drying out, that glue is definitely better, for sure. It's still got a little bit of the problem. Once it's grabbed, it's not gonna let go. But you just gotta kinda wait to see if the problem happens. So a little bit still, not much. So this would probably be a lot quicker to touch up if you did nothing other than just warm your edges and make sure they're tacked. That's way better. And what's interesting is I felt like I overshrunk this and I still haven't seen anything pop up from the top here. It's just a little bit down in this bottom corner. So what I'm, what I'm more curious about too is let's say you had that happen And then you just work, you just spray the edge and what that, so that was basically like a pretty high alcohol mix. The alcohol would then kind of like flip up onto the edge and help dry all that out. <clears throat> Not endorsing it yet. I like to throw out ideas though and then get feedback. Because if that's a simple fix and it doesn't ruin the film, that would be amazing. Shit film? No, it's not shit film. Still good. We're gonna give it just a little bit longer. It's locked down. This side looks good. It hasn't come back up. Um, I'm just going to clean everything off, and then we'll see what that corner's still doing. <sighs> All right. So, 
the reason why I was kind of playing around with that the other day was really to see if you could do the same thing with window tint that you do with paint protection film. Because with paint protection film, they use an alcohol mix on all the edges and stuff too and to lock down faster. So to be able to do the same thing on window tint, that'd be cool. Had to install, had Cool Max with wheat glue once, had to return it. Yeah, I've had it with other ones in the past. So here's, again, if we just step back from just going, ha ha, bad film, LOL. So there's a hair here. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that sit. So let me fix that real quick. And we'll put this back down if I can, if it'll come out of glue. Oh, there it goes. Use tape, yeah, I've heard of that. I guess this is probably a good situation to try it on. So you wet the tape down too? Can I use my own tape? That would be pretty awesome. Where's just my tape? I have like frog tape. I've tried it a couple times with frog tape and it didn't seem to do anything. Where's my roll? Oh, it's over there. Dry tape, wet film. Oh, well that's good to know. Yeah, see, you see? I'm the best magician on myself. <laughs> it never ends. Oh, it's right there. We're gonna try the white tape. That wasn't too sticky. That was fine. But we'll see. We'll see if it's still there. If it's still there, I'll grab another tape and then I'll call bullshit. <laughs> oh shit, where'd it go? Oh, no, it's there. <laughs> Hang on, maybe I missed it. Where's my tape? Damn, I was so excited for a second. See, like a big hair is not hard, but like a little fine one, it's already like pulls out contamination specs. Really interesting. Huh. Is it like wet like you just sprayed the film, or is it wet like you just peeled it back and then used tape? See, I still got it on there. Somebody's gotta like, ex oh, it works better if you, before you press it into the glue. Yeah, that's when it's not an issue. <laughs> oh my God. No, you can see it like especially bad when it's pressed into the glue. That's what I'm saying. You guys are silly. See, there's like two types of hairs. There's like the thicker eyelash type hairs. Those do not, or those brush out really, really easily. You can just like, and they come right out. No problem. The real fine, dusty hairs, those things are just shit. Cause they're real hard to see. And like, holy shit, man. So you, like, you feel like you get it out, and then you're sitting there <laughs> with a clay bar. Then the curly ones. You guys. Oh, it's 
like right there. Half of it's out. I think I got it. I heard something when I pulled. There we go. Now it's gone. <laughs> it's crap now. No, it's fine. If it was sitting in the middle, yeah, it'd be done. Up towards here, no, nah, it's not that hard. The more you gotta do that, the worse it is though. You gotta remember too, we've tinted this like 7,000 times. So the amount of times film has been pulled and reapplied here is a lot. All right, let's peel that off. Cool. Looks good though. That corner, that's still down. That's down over there. Um, the only thing that might pop up now is the top corner over here, which it never did before, so I don't see why it would do that now. I'll try it again in the future, but I'm still not. Somebody's got to make some better videos of it. Because I feel like we're talking about two completely different types of hairs here. There's like, like I said, there's a thicker one that's really easy to brush out. Same with speckles. And then there's real thin ones that bury themselves into the glue and are just a giant pain in the ass to try and remove. I'm using painter's tape. Getting headliner fuzz. I feel like this was more of one of those like real thin dust fiber type of things. And I never had a problem getting those out anyways. Or the, the thicker ones out. So But I wouldn't have thought to rub tape over it, so I'll keep I'll keep it in mind. We'll see. Good, good. Good, good. All right, let's clean this up, wipe it down, um, and then it uh, should be good. Then I can actually uh, leave this on my windshield for a while. So, for the amount of soap that I use and just the way that I install and everything, um, the glue is definitely better um, because it as soon as you put some heat, it was tacking down more, but you still get that little bit of time that you kind of have to warm it up a few times. I don't know. I need people to look into this whole alcohol thing, though. <laughs> Bam, look at the clarity. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uh, I wish there was a better way to tell. But, um, or at least like right after the install, but I'm just going to have to drive, drive around with it and we're in the middle of winter, so um, not the best time to review a new ceramic. Overall, it went decent. A couple of hiccups, but you learn from those. Did you miss it?
that that's the main thing that I'm interested of. Um, I want to make sure that everything's good with it um, as far as clarity. So I really didn't have a problem with the 50%. Um, when it came into some of the lower shades, that's where uh, like 20 and below, like 35 is good, 20 and below um, start to show a little bit more haze. But the improvement that they made to the Ultra um, ba should basically cure that on lower shades as soon as it makes its way down there. Dude, this is my hot fix, man. Somebody tell me that I'm doing something like way wrong, but <laughs> so much better. A little spray, no problems. It's stuck now. That's awesome. It'll dry out the dots faster. All right. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna trip. I'm gonna put my mirror, um, I'm gonna put my mirror back on after, so I just don't wanna fiddle with it right now. So I'm gonna close things out um, on YouTube in just a second. So everybody on Facebook, bye. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything else, let me know, uh, go to the YouTube live stream. So Tint Studio on YouTube, see you there. Good, thank you. Cannon. Okay. Wah. That was fun. See, if anything, I'm glad that kind of stuff happened live. Um, but especially with knowing a little bit more about how to deal with the situation, what is in that. So that is. Right now, it's just 70% isopropyl, probably like a quarter in a bottle, um, and then the rest is water, nothing else. So maybe you can play around with it too. Um, I was literally taking pieces of film, spraying just alcohol on it, and then um, spraying it literally on the film putting it on the glass, squeegeeing it out, and seeing if it had any bad effects. Little rough tests and stuff, there's only so much I can do. I'm okay with alcohol on the outside. So like, when everything's laid down, spraying the edges with it, I don't know, I, I think, yeah, I think that's a really good way. And it, honestly, from the little experiments that I was doing, so like, when you have a thicker dot matrix and you just tin it over it, spraying the edges, I don't think is gonna be enough to work that alcohol back down all the way in the dots. So what I was playing around with was like on the Ultima, I sprayed the dots and then put the tin on and then the dots just dried out way faster. But with thinner dots, I mean, the film basically like flips up. So if you spray your edges, that alcohol is basically like, you bump it a couple times, it's gonna work its way in theory a little bit more into the dots um, and should be good. So I was just kind of sh surprised how fast it made everything dry out. Makes sense, but still, I've n I just never thought to try it before. Is this commercial? Yes. Yes, this is like high grade automotive shit. Oh, I'm demonetized now. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> oh, I'll take one for the C6 windshield. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully no low angle haze. I'm told it's better than what was on there before because um, they actually have like measured the ways of measuring the haze. And yeah, it's, uh, it, so it should be good. 
I was really happy with where it was before. Like it was already really, really clear, really good stuff. So the main reason I would like to see the same type of things adopted for the darker shades is purely um, just to make the darker shades more clear. And then I think you have a slam dunk with the entire lineup. It's, it, people already really like it. Whenever you add that much ceramic though, there's always like some type of a cost. Like if you want your most simplistic film, you have a color stable dyed film. So it's literally dye, which is clear, and then you have polyester. So a high grade polyester is also clear. You put those things together, there isn't much. When you're introducing carbon and ceramic, you're in introducing particles to it. So the more refined those particles are, and I guess the way you do your layers and stuff um, helps with the clarity and all, but you're always adding stuff to it to help with heat which then can impact clarity. Our ball tech test, ball tack test said the film was 33% tackier. Would you say that translated into the world? Now I can notice a difference, yeah. It's still, like you saw, started to do that same curl back, but the way that it was able to stick back down within a short amount of time was way better. The only monkey wrench that I just decided to throw in was the alcohol spray, that's all. So one thing that I immediately want to try now is to go back to, and I'll probably do this on the Ultima. I'll probably go back to like one of the rolls that I had an issue with, throw that on the windshield or the back window of the Ultima, and then see if I can get it, see if it starts to curl back and see how quickly alcohol fixes the edges and if that's okay. That, that would be my next thing to do. Cause then I, like, it's nice. I just keep a extra bottle and if it starts coming back, just and then and there you go. That'd be great. That's what we want. We all want easy fixes that don't harm our installs. Sign one of my green triages that I ordered a little while ago. What's the order? If it hasn't gone out yet, yeah, we could absolutely do that. That's no problem. But if it's a little, it depends on how long a little while ago is. <laughs> Orders today haven't gone out. Orders over the weekend haven't gone out yet, but they will go out soon. What slip solution did you use for this install? I used baby shampoo and, and a little bit of Dawn because I'm all out of the good stuff. Two rolls of tape and two tri edges. Dawn! Oh, why'd you use Dawn? All I can tell you is you don't you don't know my struggle here. Um I like the new tape, especially the price. Thank you. I do too. I appreciate hearing that. Do you have an order order number? That would be easier because I just want to make sure two rolls of tape and two tri edges. This should be pretty easy to find. But other people might have ordered the same thing. We'll just sneak one in there. When's GeoSlip coming out? It's GeoSlip. It's gonna be tin slip. Oh, ordered 45 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's no problem. Hey, Jack. Yeah. 7939. Yep. Grab that order. I got to add something to it. Yeah, man, we got you. Damn. I got a PhD chemist at LSU whose doctrine is in adhesive and coatings, doing a research paper on how bad Dawn is for tint. That's awesome. I had zero crowback issues from using only J&J. &J. Possibly try that in the future. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind too. Yeah, it was only a little bit. So the question is, was it the Dawn? Was it not? But I've got, I, I've got a little bit more. I'll try it on the Ultima, probably. It just gets so exhausting to like, 
this, that, the other thing. Make sure. Uh, <laughs> but we'll do it somehow, somewhere, some way. Um, no, I'll I'll end this and I'll go uh, sign one and throw it in there. It'll help me steal your identity later. <laughs> This stuff seems to slide without the dawn, where Pro Nano just won't. So, like, one reason I, I still, what am I trying to say? So, I would still put it in with C2, but I definitely didn't need it as much in C2 as the rest of them. But I could use the same slip that I was using with Pro Classic, Pro Nano, C2. I didn't have to change anything. It's still crazy that it never happened. Was a curl back happening on all geo lines or only one specific? It was just the carbon plus and the apex. That's all. Yeah, everything like uh, the films that I use weren't doing it. <laughs> I'm still pro classic C2, pro nano. That's my lineup. <laughs> Oh, show. Oops, something went wrong. Hang on, let me copy it in the YouTube thing directly then. But yeah, well, thank you so much for the uh, for the five. Yeah, uh, window tint stuff on Facebook. How many? We're up to like a whole bunch of people now. Where did my desktop go? Why? Um. Mm, nope. Green screen. Display capture. Hang on. I'm ch oh, settings. Oh, this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is the Facebook group. There's, yeah, 61,000 people here now. It's super active. Let me shrink this down a little bit, maybe. I have everything scaled up so I can read it easier. Well, that didn't really help very much, did it? Facebook doesn't handle scaling very well. Um, but yeah, it's a super active community. Lots of people asking questions, lots of people sharing information. So like problems with the windshield strip. Yikes, this stuff doesn't look fun. Um, like question about one of those stupid rubber gaskets on like an F-250. That's <laughs> it's made of my nightmares. Outer trim on the Model X. Ooh, oh, that's no good. That's no good. And then, hey, that was my live stream. That's cool. Selling an extra rack. Oh, we got to get rid of that. And then I try to post little videos. So like this guy had a question about um, how to sharpen a squeegee blade. And Shane, who's also here, um, he made this nifty little video with sandpaper. So video replies on some of these things, which I think are super cool and like should have been a thing a lot longer ago. Really, really good group. Highly recommend. I'm having trouble with specs on back windows. I feel like I follow everything. A lot of it's just repetition. I mean, it's OK. You're going to have like one or two here or there. Um, reverse rolls were always like the biggest 
mystery to me. And to be honest, it's like even sometimes I install one and then I still get speckles and have to redo it. Um, but the way that I install back windows have been really, really consistent. The main thing is just peel it, spray it, and avoid touching panels, and it'll turn out really, really nice. So if you're reverse rolling, it's hard to say, because there's a lot more times that dirt can get introduced, but Frankenstein is really consistent. But I don't do that on windshields. I always reverse roll windshields. It's way easier to do that. I can feel the heat rejection from here. <laughs> yeah, man. What is it, like, probably like 30 degrees outside right now? <laughs> Good God, we had a cold weekend. All right, dudes. I got to take off now. Um, so got a few things to do. I got to try to sign so somebody can steal identity. That for sale post is gone. I got to delete it. Oh, OK. Thank you. Oh, at first I was wondering if it was yours. Thank you. Mods are so nice. 72? Uh, that would be nice. I just want like 70s. I'm so happy with 70s. But when you dive down into like two, that's when it's like, ow, this hurts. Miss the Explorer. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get something else here soon enough. All righty, guys. I will see you later. Bye.